What you're about to learn could very well be the smartest trading strategy you can use. It's incredibly simple, but as you'll see, it's so smart in the way it can give you an instant trading edge. We are a proprietary trading firm in New York City with numerous highly successful traders, almost all of whom have started their trading careers with SMB. We hope you find this channel to be a terrific place to learn and grow as a trader. Hi, I'm Seth Freiberg, and I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk here in Manhattan. And traders on our desk are constantly researching trading opportunities and historical patterns in order to see if they can find a trade with edge that they can profit from. That's just business as usual at a prop firm, and it's that constant search for edge that will unearth incredible opportunities if you learn how to think like a trader. And so recently, one of our traders was sharing with me that he had used some backtesting software to test a hypothesis of his, which was very simple. His basic thesis was that the options market usually underestimates the market moves that will take place on NASDAQ stocks on that Friday right after Thanksgiving, which is a half trading day where the market closes at 1 p.m. And so there's a particular options trading strategy that, if his thesis turned out to be correct, would be able to exploit that market tendency in a big way for a short-term trade that you, you'd be in and out of in a very short period of time. That strategy is known as a long straddle to options traders, and it's perfect for cases where the options market is underestimating how much the market will move. There's a twist to this story that I think you're going to find really interesting. But before I get into that, I wanted to let you know that beyond what we're going to be teaching you in this video, if you'd like to learn three more option strategies that our options pro traders use all the time, including the unique options trick that allows you to make money while you wait to buy stocks or ETFs at the price you want, and the options income strategy that allows you to make consistent money, whether the market goes up, down, or sideways, and how to make money on a stock or index trade, even if you're outright wrong on direction, then click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen. That will open the free workshop registration page in a new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. Or you can register directly for free at optionsclass.com. Believe me, you don't want to miss this, so pause the video, sign up now, and then resume watching. All right, now the strategy that I'm going to be teaching today involves stock options for QQQ, which is called the Qs, which is the exchange traded fund that mirrors the NASDAQ 100 index. Now, I realize that most of you know something about how stock options work, but just for a quick review, and this is going to be fast, what's known as a call option on a stock entitles the buyer of that option to purchase. 100 shares of that stock at a certain price called the strike price of that option, regardless of what price the stock is actually trading at at any time before the option expires. What's called a put option, on the other hand, entitles the buyer of that put to sell 100 shares of a stock he owns at the strike price of that put, again, regardless of what price the stock is trading at at any time before that option expires. The buyer of the option pays what's called a premium to the seller of the option because the seller of the option is taking the risk that the stock will go past the strike price of the option, in which case the buyer can exercise his option. So in the case of a call, even if the stock has gone way above the strike price of the call, the call buyer can exercise his right to buy 100 shares at that strike price, paying way below market. Or conversely, on the put option, even if the market goes way below the strike price of the put option, the buyer of that put has the right to sell his shares of that stock at the strike price of the put option that he's bought, even if the stock price has gone way below the strike price of the put. Now, on the other hand, at expiration, if you sold a call and the market closes below the strike price of the call, then unless the call was previously exercised, that call expires worthless and the call seller just pockets the premium. And if you sold a put and the market closes above the strike price of that put, then unless the put was previously exercised, it expires worthless and the call seller just pockets the premium. Okay, so with that as background, let's take a look at what this trader was contemplating, which was to buy on the day before Thanksgiving 
when the Qs were trading at about 286, he was thinking of buying 25 of both the 286 calls and the 286 puts expiring the day after Thanksgiving. And as you can see, that would have cost him $3.82 per options contract because the calls were going for $2.07 and the puts were going for $1.75. And so what he did with his backtesting software was to look back at a number of instances of this exact trade, buying an at-the-money long straddle on the day before Thanksgiving on the queues, expiring that coming Friday. And what he actually found was that the exact opposite of what he expected was true. And that is that the trade not only did not have edge, but it pretty consistently lost money. And he let me know that therefore he had abandoned this idea. Now, when a trader determines that a strategy historically loses money, he can, of course, abandon that idea, and that's a good idea in many cases. But another alternative is to think about it more deeply and ask yourself, well, if this trade historically loses money, could the reverse of this trade be expected to make money? In other words, if we take the other side of the trade, might we expect that the trade would make money? So let's examine this a little bit more in depth. First off, let's be clear on the cost of the trade he was contemplating initially. And so the price in the 286 calls was $2.07, and each options contract represents 100 shares of the Q's stock. So you multiply that by 100, and you bought 25 of them. So the cost of the calls comes out to 5175 And using that same kind of calculation, the puts cost $43.75 for a total of $95.50, which is how much cash would be removed from your account as you bought these options. And in turn, your account now owns 25 long straddles on QQQ at a 286 strike price. Now, remember, the trader has already determined that there is no historical edge to this trade. And so let's consider something creative. And that is, what if we were to, were to instead of buying the straddle, we instead sold the straddle? So think about it. If the long straddle historically loses money, then the short straddle logically should make money. And so let's explore what that would look like. And so let's take a look at how that would work. And so first off, if we sell the straddle, instead of paying out $95.50, we'll receive $95.50. But there's a problem. And that is that your broker is going to require you to set aside a huge amount of capital for this trade for reasons that we can get into in another video that we can do on margining. But for today, let's just suffice it to say that the amount of capital your broker will require for you to sell this short straddle is going to be prohibitive, and the trade just would not be viable. Fortunately, this is easily fixed by what options traders refer to as wings for this trade. So in this case, he goes up seven points to the 293 strike, and he buys 25 of those calls for very cheaply, for 15 cents. And also, he goes down seven points to the 279 strike, and he buys 25 of those puts for 22 cents. Well, now this changes things a little bit because there's a small cost to those wings. So let's take a look at that. And as you can see, we start by realizing that now we're selling the straddle. So we're the ones who receive the cash from that. And so we get $5,175 for the calls and the $4,375 for the puts in cash for selling those. And we turn around and pay out, as you can see from the calculation, $375 for the calls and $550 for the puts, resulting in a net positive cash flow to us of $8,625, which is a bit less than the $9,550 we had to pay for the long straddle, incidentally. And that, of course, is because of the small expense of the wings. Okay, so now let's move to 1 p.m. on Friday when, remember, because it's a short day after Thanksgiving, the market closes at 1, and those Q's options stop trading and can now be settled. And so what is the result of the trade? Well, at the close, the Q's price was 286.92. Now, when a stock is expiring, it either expires with no value, or if it's in the money and has value, it can be bought back and therefore closed in the closing minutes of the market for very close to where the stock is trading. And so let's take a look at how this trade turned out. And we'll start with the initial positive cash flow we told you about earlier that we received for selling the Iron Butterfly. And that's that 86.75. 
at the top of the calculation. We've got that cash already in our account. Now next, the 286 call that we sold, those are in the money by 92 cents because the queues in the final seconds of the market would be trading around that 286.92 where it closed. So for approximately 92 cents, we can buy back that option, as you can see from the calculation, because the call is located at 286 and the stock is closing right around 286.92. So you, in order to determine the price, the approximate price, you subtract the approximate price of the stock at closing from the strike price, and you get about 92 cents. And so you then multiply it by 100, like we did before, and you bought back 25 of them to close them all out. And as a result, the total cost of buying them out, closing those contracts was $2,300. So we need to subtract that out from the cash we received initially. Now, the rest of the options are easy to value because they all expire with no value. The 293 call has no value because it only has value if the stock is above 293. No one will exercise his right to buy shares higher than they're trading in the open market. And the same is true for the 286 and the 279 puts. They also have no value because no one will exercise their right to sell their QQQ shares at a price lower than they can fetch them in the open market. And so the only deduction from our original cash flow is that $2,300 we had to spend to buy back the 286 calls right before the close on Friday, resulting in a win of $6,375, a profit of 71% on the capital required on the trade in two trading days. Now, before we wrap up, there's one more point I'd like to make, and that is Let's compare this outcome, this gain of over $6,300 to the original trade that the trader had proposed. Remember, that involved buying 25 of those straddles for $95.50. Well, let's calculate how that trade would have turned out. And so again, looking at the 25 calls at 286, which in this case, in this scenario, we had bought, well, right before the close, we can cash those in for the same amount that we had to pay if we were in the iron butterfly trade, and that is that same $2,300. We would receive that uh, from selling those calls. But this time, there's only one other option to look at, the 286 put, which of course closed with zero value because the puts would only have value at a closing price below 286, but the stock closed above 286. And so therefore, we were only able to squeeze $2,300 out of the options we owned but we originally paid $95.50, leaving us with a loss of $7,250, a 75% loss on the trade. And so what I'd like you to take away from today's video is the fact that professional traders learn to look at trading opportunities from multiple angles. Just because your initial thesis proves to be historically weak does not mean the idea should be dismissed without any further thought. Instead, consider the other side of a trade, where many times you will find wonderful opportunities if you just stop to think through what you've discovered from the research you've done. That original research should not be considered a waste. Rather, as it did in this case, it can lead to a great idea. That's the kind of creativity that makes professional traders successful. Now, just to remind you, if you're serious about your trading, you need to check out the free intensive options class that we're currently running, where you'll learn three real world option strategies that our professional options traders use all the time. Just click the link that should be appearing out the top right corner of your screen, or you can head on over to optionsclass.com to register for this free workshop directly. It's really a rare opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn directly from Wall Street traders but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now before you miss it. So you're an active trader, not doing as well as you want, not doing as well as you deserve, and you just can't figure out why you can't become profitable no matter how hard you try. Well, let me show you why. This is your competition, the traders in this room. This room right here is full of elite traders, some of whom are making seven and even eight figures a year. In fact, our top guys have made nearly 20 million each in net trading profits in a single year. Let's head to my office so I can share more. So you're probably used to seeing videos of lavish trader lifestyles, trading gurus trading off of a laptop for an hour a day, heck, maybe even 15 minutes a day. 
and then them relaxing on some secluded beach for the rest of the day. Well, all I can tell you is that our traders train like pro athletes. They live and breathe the markets and are continually working on their trading skills. Because at our firm, that's what we found it really takes to make it in this game. I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder and managing partner of SMB Capital, one of the world's top proprietary trading firms located in Midtown Manhattan. And we're always looking for trading talent to hire and develop. And not just to trade in-house on our desk, but also to trade from their own home, entirely using our firm's capital. And we have numerous traders doing just that, allowing them to make upwards of seven figures trading the firm's capital without risking their own money. But to even get a shot at something like that, you need to have the right training. That's why we're doing a new free online presentation in which we share how you can get an interview with SMB to become an in-house or remote trader, trading firm capital without risking yours and gaining access to all of our firm's coaching and resources. And the best part, you don't have to be a profitable trader yet. In fact, we prefer to mold profitable traders with our methods and our techniques. That's why we have just three simple criteria that can earn anyone an interview. We're looking for highly ambitious and determined traders who fit our culture first and foremost. So if you believe that could be you, sign up for the free one hour online presentation by clicking the link that's in your top right corner of your screen now.